All right, mud lovers, you join me bright and early down here on the Thames foreshore. We go mudlarking as usual, which means looking for anything old and interesting on the River Thames foreshore when the tide goes out. There's loads of history down there. So let's go get some luck in the muck. Well, first farm with a detector is a little musket ball stuck to a bit of rust. Take that off. Yeah, cool. Little pistol shot. Seem to find quite a few of these recently. Still, never a bad thing. So I'm joined by Cuffs, he's camped down here as well. We do some mud larking and do you know what? We thought we'd have a little competition and see how many coins we can find each. So, usually get a few down here, so yeah. I'm feeling hopeful. <laughs> cool, all right then, so we'll just do volume of coins today. I know you're gonna win, because he's the devil on this machine, and I, my mind just wanders and I'll start looking at pottery and It's not all stuff. about the quantity though, it's <laughs> something about the quality, so. I'll get my excuses in early as well, but there we go, we're all, all having a bit of fun anyway, so we'll see how we get on. Well, let's know if you find any coins, and uh, let the fun commence. Luck. Let the fun commence and get some luck in the muck. isn't a coin it's a very worn pewter button it's still pretty cool though see the shank on the back there there's a design on there can't quite make it out now oh, well we can do better than that you see around here look, it's all a bit of a dump all this pottery it's pretty cool one there one there those are tightly packed for sure Really interesting. Tiles. Well, like I said, I'm not always looking for metal artifacts, but this is quite cool. This is a pipkin handle. So this is a small little cooking pot. And uh, this was the handle of it. So I really like that. It's probably quite old. Post medieval redware, 1600s, 1800s, maybe a bit earlier. I'll show you, show you a picture of what it looks like now. No coins in here, Mike. <laughs> You're stuck. <laughs> See you, mate. Oh, Let me out. <laughs> I'm trapped. Now, this is the Uidals on the tens. Back in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, getting some luck in the muck here. Not a coin, but a button. The right shape. Nice little fly button. Another handful of history. This is like a spoon head. Hmm. Yeah, very old pewter spoon head. Well, look at all these bolts. All ship bolts. How's anyone supposed to detect this? Oh, the answer is they can't. I'll do a bit by eye, maybe we'll find something in amongst all this. Good luck. Well, that tells me everything I need to know. It's from his Scottish whiskey, probably. 
It's on the inside though, which is interesting. It's pretty cool. Little draw handle. Yeah, not sure on age on that. I think it's a draw handle. Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Maybe Victorian. Pretty nice. Well, first blood goes to good old cuffs. And he's just taking his toothbrush out that he's been using fresh this morning. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. nice little rose farthing. Look at that. Good find, man. Yeah, it's all right. Very nice. Charles I. Yeah, there's the rose there. Looking lovely in the afternoon sun. First coin of the day, well done. Yeah. Right, I'm going to get like a load of euros now to start and beat you. <laughs> <laughs> First coin, yay! 5p. I think, or foreigner, that's oh, 5p. One on the board. Well, first old coin. There we go, I think it's a penny. That'll do, let's give it a little wash. Yeah, nice children's fifth coin, not bad, Nick. 1922. Oh, 1921. Beg your pardon. Cool, two to me. Uh, same hole, bizarrely. Always cheat your holes, just a penny. Still, it adds to the game. Cool. Another old coin? No, just a penny. Oh, what I've you got? Ship, ship's take. I take these, I call Oi, them. Oi, nice swear on this channel. <laughs> hey, ships. Seven. Half oh, penny. Well done. Yeah. What's that? Three all now, is it? Uh, I've got two old coins. And uh, ten moderns. Oh really? Yeah. Got a fair few pennies and two pieces. Oh flipping it, blow me out the water, mate. <laughs> oh, he's, he's blowing me out the water with the uh, with the moderns. Damn it. Oh, no. hey, you know what? Oh, really, is it? Right, you see that silver? Oh, you you see that silver in on it? Well, inside there's like a thread, I think. Yeah, it's like uh, a it's a bolt. Yeah. It's a Teased by the bolt. Oh, thought he had a coin. I thought he had a ring. But uh, just dug this up. Modern 2p, 10p. Oh, it's a spin ball. Yeah, the pubs will take that. 5p. Oh, I'm getting plenty of modern up. Well, that fooled me for a bit. It looked nice and gold, but I think it's a euro. Well, it has to be, doesn't it? Yeah, one or oh, 10 cents. Nice to get some sense into me. <laughs> well, I've just found a, a musky ball here. There's a little patch with a few in, so maybe there's a bit of age to it. Who knows? But yeah, gone from finding loads of modern coins to musky balls. And that's about the third one now. Interesting. Uh, another coin, keep coming up. Another 2p. Oh, so Cuffs has got a nice little bit of potential silver. Yeah. That looks alright, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was better when it was wet, you could see it clearly. <laughs> but it's George III with head sixpence. Beautiful. The other side's a bit knackered. It looks a little bit sick on that side, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a bit cruddy. I think it will. I think it's a silver one rather than the pewter forgery, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, you have to live, give it a little fizz when you get home. Actually, I'm thinking it is a forgery. Yeah? Mm. Well, well, now it's dried, so it feels more of a forgery. <laughs> Christ, that's getting a bit pleasant. Get this detector. And what the forgeries would have been silver washed, wouldn't they? Uh, yeah, probably. That's cool though, it's still a nice bit of history. Lovely coin. 
Do you know what? What? You can, I can bend it. Do so, I don't know. Oh, the ones I've found that are fake are made of like copper alloy. Yeah, you do get pewter ones. I've had a couple, but oh, it's hard to tell. Well, we're still, uh, still a winner, aren't we? After getting that nice coin. Yeah. If you need us, if you need us, forgery. Forgeries are sometimes more interesting anyway, aren't they? Had more forgeries than real ones of these, though. Yeah. All the bloody real ones. <laughs> yeah. the George. Oh, nice. Get played up. <laughs> Well, we've definitely done loads of coin shooting today, didn't we? Yeah. How many drinks you've had in total? I've had one, two, three old, old coins, maybe yeah. four predecessors, and then about 20 moderns. Yeah. 25, maybe. Oh, we'll have to. I think you've won. We'll have a count up anyway and see, uh, see who's got the most. All right, there we go, we're finished for the day. We're gonna have a tot up and see who's got the most amount of coins. I know Cuff's done really well with his old coins today, but still, done all right, we've got plenty of coins. Let's have a yeah. count up and see, see how well we've done. It's gonna be close on the modern coins, I think. Yeah, that's Very it. Close. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, look, these are all the lovely coins. This is Cuff's lot, and his nice little selection of oldies there buttons. Anyway, right, let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Yeah, I've only got one old one, oh. I think. 28 coins, what you got, Mike? Seven. What are you saying, what are you saying? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Whoa, it's close. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, <laughs> twenty-nine, thirty. Thirty. Whoa, you won. By two, yeah. By two. What well I mate? <laughs> <laughs> what do I get? Uh, a pint. You get a kiss. There you go. <laughs> I'll buy you a pint. Go with a spoon, though, yeah? £1.80 a pint. Oh, £1.79, mate. Don't oh, forget the penny. <laughs> oh, well, do you know, I, I forgot to say, we're actually doing musket balls today, not coins. Oh. Yeah, so, you know, we're going to change the competition. Musket balls oh, now. Yeah, let me have a look. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten musket balls. That's not bad. So. Did I win on the buttons? Oh, without well, a doubt, I only have one. Any other competitions we can do? <laughs> uh, a bit pewter. Oh, how many caps? Yeah, how many pewter powder caps to be fired? <laughs> <laughs> so this is really cool. So back in the day, you'd have had a measure like this. Had a few of them probably wrapped around. They might have been sealed. This lead measure had a dual purpose back in the 1600s. It acted as the lid on a wooden capsule that held black gunpowder for use with firearms such as muskets. It was also used as a measure so the correct amount could be emptied into the barrel before adding the lead shot. These caps are made from lead because a wooden cap could become jammed if it got wet. The phrase to keep one's powder dryer means be prepared for a possible emergency and originated from the time that soldiers had to take good care of their gunpowder in case of an attack. That's really cool. I love that. You deserve to win anyway because you had three old pennies, two, two sheep apennies and a nice bullet and a little roast farthing. That one's uh, George III. Oh, six. right. Okay, cool. Yeah, George III. A bit knackered, but it will clean up. Yeah, nice one. Oh, good day. So there we go, my lovers. What a great day, coin shooting on the Thames. And it just goes to show that metal detectors do work. And they're, they're awesome if you know how to use them. Yeah, better than ours, aren't they? <laughs> that's true. Well, down here, there's lots of bolts, as, I, as you showed earlier. So it's very hard. You've got to find the selective little areas. But yeah, if you persist it, you can find some good stuff. So there, mate. Hope you enjoyed that, my lovers. And see you on the next mud adventure. See you on the next one. 
Well, there we go, my lovers. I hope you enjoyed that detecting bonanza on the Thames foreshore. We had a lot of fun. We found a lot of coins. Now, before you ask, yeah, we did actually give some to the buskers on the way to the pub. And interestingly, in the pub, I met for the first time a pearly king and queen, or two kings, actually. So yeah, it's really interesting the history behind those guys. Their whole suits are covered with pearly buttons and they've got the name of the area they come from on their back. But they were lovely guys and we actually swapped hats as well, which is really cool. <laughs> pearly kings and queens of London are an iconic institution. Its origin started in the 1870s when it's thought a man called Henry Croft, an orphan and street sweeper, pioneered the idea. He wanted to collect money for orphanages and hospitals and adorned his suit with hundreds of pearl buttons. Other London boroughs soon joined in and the suits had buttons arranged in the shapes of hearts representing charity, wheels for the circle of life and horseshoes for the donkeys that pulled the carts in the old markets. Each borough of London still has a pearly king and queen, so if you're ever in London, keep an eye out for them and why not give them a few bob so they can carry on their good work. So on the subject of coins, which is the theme running through today's episode, I thought I'd have a little go at engraving them. Now I love upcycling and turning things into things which are more interesting or better or giving a new lease of life on things. Now we find quite a lot of Georgian blank copper coins and Victorian blank copper coins because they've been used for so many years, they've rubbed down completely smooth. Um, they're fine as they are. I mean, a lot of detectorists scrap them or throw them. They're just not interested in them. And I've accumulated quite a few in the past so what i thought today i'll try my hand at engraving and to see what sort of patterns and designs i can come up with using my dremel let's have a go so these are the sort of coins i'm talking about um they're absolutely worn smooth um be it from being handled or just worn down by the tired and i have actually had a go at creating my own one and i'm so happy with this check this out look at that Really cool skull. I actually made this entirely using a Dremel, just like this one here. So I'm gonna give it a go again and show you how I can do it and using the Dremel to see what more other designs I can do. So I'll do a new one now and use the Dremel and see what we can make. So how cool is that? And I really like that. Obviously it's a skull, but it's, um, it's something I imagine a pirate would have made, <laughs> board on a boat. Anyway, let's see if we can do another Thames themed toy. I think I'll use this one this time, quite big. Quite cool. But interestingly, coins have been defaced over the years. You've got coins that have been defaced for political messages. My friend Flo found one and it had votes for women on it. Really, really cool. And also there's been ones defaced in the past where they've been made into love tokens and brooches and also a thing called slap tokens. And there's silver coins that have been worn down and then counter stamped to show that they are still worth something and not, not a forgery or anything like that. So they're quite interesting to find as well, but I don't think there's been many carvings done. So you never know, I might start a new trend. Here we go, let's give it a go.
Well, there we have it, guys. Uh, really happy with that, actually. Um, it's kind of crude, but I like it. It looks like a kind of artistic, you know, representation of the anchor and a little boat there, top left. Yeah, it took, uh, took a long time, about three or four hours to make that. I thought it'd take a lot quicker. This one did did take about two hours um, and it seemed to go really well. Uh, so is this one. Um, it will take a little while for it to dim back, a bit like that, but um, I found a method to make it look, look a bit aged. But it looks great in, in different lights. It looks slightly different. So, uh, yeah, really cool. So I'm uh, going to share the love. I think I was going to put these in the Thames to see if anyone else could find them, but I was worried that... Maybe they get lost forever and I'll never get to, you know, no one else would enjoy them. But um, I fancy putting these on my eBid store, so come and get them. The links will be in the description below. So come and have a cheeky beard if you fancy taking one of these one of a kind coins that were made from Georgian, or I think this might be a French double turmoil. I think I'll just about make a very slight detail on the back there. Um, I'm not sure what that one was. That's probably a Georgian at some point. Anyway, they were completely and utterly blank. Again, some detectors throw these away or just scrap them and uh, there's no love for them so I thought I'd upcycle them have a bit of fun there with the engravings so yeah if you want to support me crack on over to the uh, eBay page and have a cheeky bid thanks very much for watching mud lovers and I'll see you in the next mud venture oh, and, uh... Would you reckon the lead's right in? You good? No, it just wants a straight. Good boy. Pieces of eight, pieces of eight. <laughs>